Our next performer, 2645. Their program, Monsters in the Closet. monster movies for the plot. You know, good versus evil. Van Helsing slays the vampire. Like he always has. Like he always should. A perfectly packaged suicide. Delicious and satisfying. Like how I wish I can kill the parts of myself that feel like a body snatcher. An invasion. A parasite. Aesthetically and morally. So reprehensible. So they call you a monster. Laughing. Ignoring the way your face crumbles. Adam's apple bobbing. They call you a queer coding in cinema originates in the 1950s, where the Hayes Code, which enforces a set of moral guidelines that regulates censorship, discouraged representation of queer characters. Queer depictions were only permitted if the character's sexuality was not specifically mentioned and in the end was defeated with their sins punished equating evil as being synonymous with transgender people might really all be vampires. <laughs> now, I, of course, mean the ones who sparkle in daylight. Ooh. Or the ones who crave a fair maiden's neck. Oh. <laughs> After all, most transgender people can't even walk home without the uncertainty of how their own blood might puddle across the monster movies or for the atmosphere. <laughs> There's something so comforting about how even the socially acceptable, valuable youth can, for an hour and a half, feel what I feel. Trapped, running, hiding, terrified. <sighs> Yet the great irony is, Monsters don't even exist. In 1943, Hollywood enacted the Hayes Code, a set of strict moral standards that sanitized screens from queer existence. Despite this, many villainized characters in cinema and television have been seen to have queer traits, while some networks are beginning to redefine what being queer in film looks like. The media I consumed as a child had me believing that queer people could only be monsters. As states across the country vilify our very existence, it is imperative that we turn a critical eye to the way that our stories are being told to the newest and most vulnerable members of our community. So through the poems, Monsters by Maya Gilmore, Maybe All Transgender People Are Vampires by Cassandra Montran, a queer code of spoken word poem by Kathy Hopkins, The Prose, Monsters in the Closet by Harry M. Benshoff, and articles from The Collider, The Tempest, What's Trending, and The Lasso. A program. Today I stand here in the clothes that are authentically me, and I'm finally ready to share my story. <laughs> I am a proud black trans woman. <laughs> and to younger me and every other queer kid hiding, you are loved. You are seen. 
and you are not a monster. In a 1984 study of homosexuality as a monstrous condition, researchers defined heterosexual fears of gays and lesbians. <laughs> into three categories. One, homosexuality as a threat to the individual. That's someone you may know, or even yourself, <laughs> might be a homo, like an evil Mr. Hyde or the Wolfman. There might be a gay or lesbian inside you, just striving to come out. I watch monster movies for the symbolism. <laughs> a ghost is like never just a ghost, trapped between this world and another, waiting what she wanting. <laughs> The ghost exists through time, yet never exists at all. <laughs> they cross the streets and warn their children of the monster. You pretend they didn't mean it. It is just a joke. And you are just one big joke. Fictitious favorites like Aladdin and Pocahontas, as well as horror movies like Psycho and Silence of the Lambs, codify queerness as being synonymous with evil, while upholding the status quo that inherently sees queer people as inferior aberrations. This process exemplifies society's fear of deviation from gender norms, while creating psychological associations in queer youth that who they are is evil. Two, homosexuality as a threat to others through rape and violence. Just like Frankenstein's monsters, homosexuals might just run rampant across the countryside claiming innocent victims like vampires. Can't see our own reflection in the mirror. Maybe that means whatever stares back at me is made of smoke and myth. Maybe I was born wombless and wounded. Born bloodthirsty. For whatever would make me more woman enough, including the slice and pull of my own body, of my own flesh to call to its own surface, you know, maybe I was born dead. Or worse, undead, an undying body refusing to rot even when this world wants me burned, you know, maybe I should write my own obituary so I can at least be remembered by the right pronouns. I watch monster movies for the monster. I can relate. <laughs> the anger, the anguish, the loneliness. You see, that's my family. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be because Focus on the Family never made a movie for me, nor Hallmark, nor Disney, nor any other wholesome family entertainment. The way two big bones and muscles slither around your heart, a constrictor suffocating every scrap of self-esteem. The way each pronoun stings like a spider bite, poison seeping into your veins. Three, homosexuality is a threat to the community by destroying conservative values, traditional gender norms, and the nuclear family, pow! Oh, the worst of all monsters. The homosexual activists may strike at the very foundation of society, seeking to infect and destroy not only you, but the very pillars of which civil society is built. I'm always comparing myself to ghosts to prove that I'm worthy of a lifespan over 32. And you know, I've never been so sure of something. Except one day, I will die. And it won't be my fault. And they'll say it's my fault, and you know, maybe that's what it means to be transgender, to own this grief, to inherit the skulls of every queen before you, and to wear it like a crown, and what radius it is to sparkle in daylight, to command everyone's attention, especially those who make a bull's die out of my beauty, and that I will never be woman enough. And that I will never
never be woman enough for anyone's sympathy. <laughs> and maybe all transgender people really are vampires. Maybe our reflections belong to everyone but us. And maybe the next time I leave home, I won't come back. By recognizing queer coding and the characteristics that have negative effects on queer individuals, we can seek change by advocating for diverse queer heroes of all shapes, sizes, and abilities. Rather than solely depicting them as monsters <laughs> exist outside of what is deemed appropriate for children. So baby monsters in closets don't come out and instead hate themselves just as much as the villain on the screen. I watch monster movies because they're real. Thank <laughs> you.